Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you may be. My name's Ed and welcome to Let's Go Fishing. Well, good day guys. Welcome back. Welcome to another Tackle Talk. Today we're covering everything got to do with floats, as much as I know anyway. Um, I use mainly three rigs and um, I'll show you them. I'll tell you what they're for. So uh, I hope you come away with something. Sit back and enjoy. Alright, here are some of my floats that I have. Not all of them, but just uh, I picked out a few. Um, we'll just start from this side and, and I'll explain to you what they are. This here is my favourite quill float. I've had it for years. I've, uh, that one was given to me by an old mate of mine who's no longer with us anymore. So it has sentimental value. So I don't use that one anymore. And I, I don't know if you can get these anymore. Um, but there, uh, that one there is my favourite quill float. Next in line is um, the floats that I make. These are out of pelican feathers. These quill floats here are very light and um, they're great for garfish or uh, mullet especially garfish they um, they just they're, they're so light they turn them around in the water and you can see them i don't if you put some weight on them you can actually um, have them standing up but i normally just have them laying down and if a fish bite it usually pops them up out of the water a little bit or it moves them across the water great little float and this one here's um, I bought one uh, it's just a tube plastic tube and um, and it's just watertight on both ends and that one there I caught mullet on before nice float too okay now we're getting into the blackfish floats now these blackfish floats these are homemade floats this one here I numbered them corresponding to um, the weights it needs and I weigh them at home and uh, I don't have to muck around with it when I'm on so on uh, the site there fishing because I just put these sinkers on and I know it's weighted properly no mucking around at all so that's what the numbers are there for this one here too is um, the same deal but uh, it's, a, it's for fishing for uh, blackfish in still waters I like the colour scheme because you can see it in the um, when there's glare in the water. You can really that stands out. This is more of a, a robust um, float, fishing off the rocks in um, in turbulent water and that for blackfish and so on. It's um, it holds more weight, so that means you can cast it out easier. And that one was given to me. It's also been a, it's a bought one as well. This one here is made out of balsa wood. I have two skewers glued into it. Uh, it has a sinker on the bottom with a bit of um, soldering lead wrapped around it just to put it, uh, just to weight it properly. So I use this one for mullet. It's my mullet float. And um, I don't use any weight on it. I just, it goes straight to a long shank hook. Number size 10 um, for garfish and, and mullet. This one here is also a blackfish float, which uh, I use in the channel and so, so on. Um, it's also numbered. It has its um, corresponding weights for it. Made out of, um, it's called a black boy. I don't know it's the real the scientific name for this, this plant. I don't know, but you know, those black boys that grow in, in the bush and... Um, it's got that stem, it dries out, falls to the ground, you grab it, shape it to what you want, and it's a, it makes a great float. The old time has told me about this one. It's really hard too, and, uh, it's, and it's very buoyant. That one's a homemade float as well. If you haven't seen uh, uh, my videos on making these, go ahead and do it, because um, if you like making floats for yourself, I'll show you how to step by step how to make these floats. Uh, it's got a stainless steel shaft on it, 
and it's pre-weighted because it's been stainless steel so it's a fantastic float it's uh, pre-weighted up to say around there and um, yeah very robust you you won't have that snapping on you in a hurry all right now we move on to the so-called bobby corks these floats here I, I used to do a lot of um, live bait fishing off the rocks and um, I haven't done that for quite a while actually and that's the floats I used to use these ones here now we'll talk about this big one it's just the foam float that you buy from from anywhere really but what I did was um, I cut it there you might you'll make it a seam there and I glued it back together but I cut it from another float and what I did is um, it hollowed it out and put a sinker in there and I also put another sinker here so it's really weighted it, it's weighted and it sinks up to there up to that line and if you haven't seen my video on catching mullet have a look at it if you like catching mullet because uh, it's a new way of catching mullet that most people don't know this this float is just tied straight onto your main line and that main your main line has droppers on it two or three droppers and uh, what happens is that that's floating there and your droppers are going straight to your rod tip but it's always on the surface of the water so that means that where the mullet are feeding on the surface say when you're burling up throw some bread in or whatever your boat is right in the strike zone so this method of fishing is fantastic I that day I ended up with um, a lot of uh, good size mullet and uh, yeah it's a good video I think it's got quite a few thousand hits already all right moving on this one here get lights up at night now it takes little button batteries and it's got an LED inside of it um, so all you do is just screw it on make sure you don't cross thread it as you screw it on and you've got that seal there so that'll seal up when you tighten it and when you store them don't tighten it all the way through you don't want that seal to be squashed all the time and it's um and you put your line in there but there's a better float last but not least these ISO floats these ones this one here glows in in the dark or shines in the dark has little lights like has two LED lights in it and these batteries they're, they're batteries you pull them out of there that's just for storage and when you put them in here you see it just lights up um, you can use one or, or two and um, yeah they're fantastic floats they've got a seal there and a seal there and they seal down the bottom so the advantage of this float is that once you do it up tight there's no water getting into the battery compartment but you can thread your line through it and it's a running float great idea great great little floats that's from that's an iso float from sydney i, I order in from sydney and these two i use these for catching um catching drummer off the rocks when I'm, i don't want to uh if it's too rocky you're getting too many snags well i put one of these on and I'll show you how to rig that so for catching blackfish or Ludric this is the way you rig up okay this is the Ludric float rig that I use <clears throat> I um, use 12 pound line for the main line uh, mono or braid I normally go with braid and then put 12 pound mono on it I have a stopper up the top and a bead and that runs through the float to the swivel tied off on the swivel and I have a lumo bead now the lumo beads I um, color in with text up black because I personally just like a black lumo bead and um, and that's there just for cushioning the float when it runs back down onto that swivel uh, from there I have a piece of 30 centimeter 12 pound line from swivel 
two swivel and on that line I have two lumo beads and in between those lumo beads I have a sinker weighted for that float. Now like I said those, sink, those lumo beads are there just to cushion the sinker. I have the swivel next and also, then I have these traces. Now one trace is 60 centimetres long and the other one's 35, 30 or 35 centimetres long. And on that I have four or six size hooks, black fish hooks, to fish off the rocks. I normally go for four because there's some big lodric out there and I use eight size in the channel or in protected waters. So that's my um, Lodric float rig. For catching drummer, this is the way you rig up. Okay, this is my drummer float rig. Now, it's a simple rig. I've got 20, I use 20 pound braid or mono, going straight down to a swivel. I like using the ISO floats, a bobby cork or whatever you have like that, and a bead and a stopper knot sliding up and down to wherever you want. 20 centimetres of 15 pound line from swivel to swivel. On that I have a sinker weighted for that float and a lumo bead. Now from there I have a long leader about 60 centimetres of 15 pound fluorocarbon and, um, and I have one or two split shots on that leader. Down the bottom I use a uh, double strength hook, a size 2 normally, and uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it. And for catching mullet and garfish with these quill floats, this is the way you rig up. Okay, this is the simplest float um, rig of them all. I've got 6 pound line running straight down to the hook. And I like using quill floats because they're nice and light and sensitive and it's a sliding float so you just put two little uh, rubber bands around it and it can slide up and down the line and you can have the depth you want anyway um, if you want to make this float stand up on end well you just add you know a few little split shots or a sinker and it will stand up on end, but I, this is the way I like using it for garfish, especially garfish. Well, I use a 10, size 10 hook, long chain hook down here, and they're only small hooks because um, the garfish especially have small mouths, and uh, that's the simplest rig you can make. Well guys, that's another episode on Tackle Talk. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, you come away with something. Uh, if you like the video, please give me the thumbs up. Thank you to all my subscribers. And I think my next video will be fishing off the rocks. So uh, I'll see you then. Take care.